I'm not going to spend time hyping this up, but I have to mention that the purpose of this mod is to insert horror into the Minecraft experience in a way that doesn't impede on playstyle. That means that this isn't some monster that will blow out your eardrums and insta-kill you with a barrage of hypersonic backshots, or grief your world in long-standing structures. This is a mod that you can reasonably fit into any mod pack or playthrough that you think could benefit from added challenge and fear factor. This is a technical showcase, so for the most part I won't be utilizing shaders or environments to show that I'm not relying on ambience for spookiness. You act in sus, huh? <laughs> it's a little spooky. Yeah. What's up with it? He knows I'm on to it. The problem with other mods that set out to do this is that they don't actually present any consequences, giving the effect of fake ominousness. The problem with presenting a threat is that if it falls flat, it nullifies the ominous effect. But it also can't be so strong that it destroys the player's experience and takes them out of their immersion. Alright, so when a skinwalker is actually able to reach you, what he's gonna do is completely switch forms. And that's when he's actually aggressive. That's when he's gonna cause you a problem. So you can tell he actually blends in pretty well. I can't spot him out here. Oh, there he is. He's right there. <laughs> can tell by the behavior. But, um, in the final product, there's gonna be different behaviors, so you're gonna have to spend a little bit more time searching. And you're gonna wanna do this before going in and chopping up a herd of cattle, because that is a chance of happening. Usually it won't happen on the first hit, but that's what it looks like. I want the Skinwalker to be able to get through any reachable one block opening. The Skinwalker's pathing assumes that it has a 1x1x1 one by one by one bounding box, so given the pathfinding works as intended, this isn't the hard part. We need the Skinwalker to switch height modes properly in every possible terrain case. This has been achieved through averaging the X and Z position of the entity and its next pathing node position, then getting the value of the higher of the two Y positions. Next, we place a 3 block tall and 2 block tall bounding box at these coordinates to check for obstructions and switch modes accordingly. To show bounding box switching behavior implemented on other mobs, I'm going to summon a cave dweller. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Alright, let me put on my armor. <laughs> Give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> Technical difficulties, hold on. We're gonna see his crouching behavior. And how far it can get him. He's having a tough time. So... Okay, well, he's getting through it. Let's see if he gets through this. <sighs> Alright. Can he do this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, bro. Alright, alright. So now I'm gonna demonstrate his ability to break blocks. And yeah, you're probably wondering... Why is he able to break blocks if it's supposed to be uh, well integrated into the normal Minecraft playstyle? And my answer to that is I implemented what is currently a hash table to record two pieces of data every time a player places a block. The entry is keyed with the block location and each block location is saved with a timestamp. Each entry expires within a set amount of time. The skinwalker searches the table within a small radius if it fails to pass to the target, and is then able to path to and break only those blocks. This system is very powerful as it also enables the skinwalker to counter many other block placing strategies that the player might exploit to avoid the entity. For example, I have already given the skinwalker the ability to counter nerd polling by checking that a player is at a position generally above the skinwalker when it breaks a block. If true, the skinwalker will break every block in the table in a chain that is above the target block, causing the pillar to collapse. 
The nerd pulling is still somewhat of a viable option, but he still counters it, so I think that's the perfect compromise. Mm-hmm. Through the trapdoors. Block this off. You can see he's still pathing through it. Oh, wow. Wow. Nerd pull, nerd pull. <laughs> Check that out. Is it that sick? What? Okay. Just do that. Yeah, you tweak out. I did implement idle animations, as you can tell. This is a technical demonstration, so I can go ahead and show the exploits, because... There's always gonna be some. Let's watch this. Oh. <laughs> what? Why is collapse target null again? As I was saying, the counter. Or the. Are you. What are, you, what are you doing? Do the thing! Okay, there we go. Took him a while, man. Get him lobotomized. See, that's all you have to do to avoid it. I will try to fix it, but I might have to put it in an entirely different tick case because checking for adjacent blocks could be pretty expensive. So I'm gonna let this skinwalker approach me. See what happens. There you go. I implemented a true damage system with the hunger damage type. See, I got a full set of protection for netherite in my inventory here. I'm gonna equip this. And just watch my health bar, see what happens. Same amount of damage. That's to always keep you on your toes. Ideally, he doesn't kill you. Like, if you're not stupid, he probably shouldn't kill you. But he's always a threat, and that's kind of the point. Here's a preview of some of the other Skinwalker variants that are still work in progress. No. Skinwalker is seriously starting to tweak. He's tweaking out. 